Hello everyone, here I am. I'm thrilled to present the new release of Glared, which will be available for free to all existing Glared users and to new users who wish to purchase it. We have completely rebuilt the engine using geometry nodes and essentially started from scratch because I wanted to create a more modern product compared to what we currently have on the market, which was a bit outdated. Now, I hope to remember who to thanks for this fantastic scene I'm using. I hope to do so in the video description. I'll activate the effects, which are already active, and show you how the new Glared works. For those who are already familiar with it, it's quite similar, although I have uh, made uh, some improvements. I hope so. From here, you can activate the effects, which are already active. Uh, I've deactivated them individually because uh, now you can choose to activate each effects separately. This first value determines how present this type of effect is. This second value decides where to cut in relation to the source producing the glow at the moment. Right now, we have a very narrow range of action because there is very little light in this scene. If the scene were brighter, we would have a wider range. Unfortunately, this is something I can't create adaptively. So here, effectively, everything we want happens within the first few values. Uh, remember, by holding down the Shift key, you can fine-tune and adjust the values more precisely. If you can see, for instance, if I increase the value to the right, it reduces the area producing the glow. I'm happy with this setting. Here we have the glow scale, which determines how much the glow blurs. Currently, this glow is taking on the color of the source from which it is produced. Uh, we can choose to force a different color. I don't want to do it, it here because I like this yellowish color that the glow produces. Next, we have the streak effect. The streak effect consists of uh, those horizontal rays produced on the camera sensor by imperfections on the surfaces covering the lens. We here also have the option to adjust the intensity and decide the cutoff, which determines where the effect is cut. As you can see, the cutoff reacts very quickly and becomes new. We can also adjust the width of the emitted ray. See how it narrows down to become very horizontal, resembling more of the glow. Conversely, we can widen it. Additionally, we can adjust the height, which blurs the effect that would otherwise be very detailed. As you can see, there is a lot of detail here. Uh, if we adjust the height a bit, we remove this pixel level detail, which looks a bit fake, resulting in a more realistic effect. It's important to note a significant new feature in the latest version of Blender. Finally, they have introduced the real-time compositor, which can be activated here on the camera or always, in my case. Enabling the compositing options GPU instead of CPU on modern computer uh, should significantly speed up what you're seeing. Right now, the scene is quite complex for my hardware, which is why I'm experiencing these lags. Otherwise, the add-on itself is very lightweight. After adding the streak effect here, we can also force a color. Uh, I choose blue because it reminds me of the colors created by a lens. The ghosts, obviously, are not as powerful as those in Flared 2, but they are still quite interesting. They are three-dimensional effects projecting from the light identified within the scene. Right now, I am adjusting the brightness of the ghost to decrease it and working on the cutoff threshold. Here, if I adjust the cutoff, it effectively removes most of the ghosts, leaving only a small portion. I'm also working on its blur, so it becomes sharper, closer to its original appearance. I prefer it to be blurred this way. Additionally, I have the option to create dispersion. This filter simulates the dispersions that occurs on lenses. I make it much lighter so that it is barely visible and creates effects that add depth to the scene. Ultimately, 
it's depend on your eye sensitivity. You can also adjust its scale, modifying how large this effect is in terms of size. After the streaks, we have the super flare, which we introduced last year at the beginning of this year, I don't remember. It involves a complex set of informations generated in slightly complex node. Here we have a brightness settings that determines how present the effect is in the scene, ranging from zero to very high. We'll keep it a bit lower. There's also a cutoff that decides on which lights the effect is present. I would raise the cutoff significantly in this case to produce less effect. We have a multiplier that determines how many interactions occur in the filter, similar to a kaleidoscope generated by the data present in the scene. Let's remove the ghost for now. It's as if this filter is a bit like a star, and the more we increase this interaction, the more rays the star emits. It can be understood in this way. Additionally, there's a rotation feature. As you can see, some elements can rotate. Since I could control these elements, I include it. It might be useful. It might be not. Let me know. I'm very interested in your feedback on what I'm doing with Glared. Since I've taken it up again, I want to move it forward properly. We have a global mix that determines how present all the effects we've just seen are in the scene, allowing for greater tuning. We also have improved the details feature. Previously, I used the compositor internal filter, but now I've created my own filter, which I think is better. Here we have the mix, which is always the amount of the effects we are applying, and the range, which is how many pixels are considered by this sharpening effect. Additionally, there's a factor, another type of adjustment I wanted to include, which seems similar to the range, but it isn't, because it's actually a different factor from the mix. Try it out. Due to the video compression, uh, what I'm doing may not be visible uh, right now. Let me know how it goes. We also have a lens dirt effect. Here we can adjust the brightness of the dirt. Right now it seems not existent, but we have a very high cutoff. If I lower the cutoff, the dirt suddenly appears. By holding down the shift key, the dirt is produced only by the brightest part of the scene which is exactly what I wanted. We don't have other controls from dirt. It's not as powerful as the one in Flared 2. We also have the vignette effect, from which we've added controls for both presence and scale, allowing you to decide how strong the scale is that vignettes the borders. Finally, we have the chromatic aberration effects, just like in the first glare. It hasn't changed and is the same type of effect. So, I'll just add this. This version of Glared, which will be released soon, is my Christmas gift. There's an update for Flared and one for Glared, both free. I'll release the Glared update in beta because I'm not entirely convinced of some decisions I've made regarding the nodes that produce these effects. So, use it for experiments and, more importantly, to give me feedback. You have the previous version, which you've been using for over a year and seems to work well. This new version is definitely better, but might still produce artifacts. I'm not aware of or unwanted results. So, let me know your thought and use it as if it were a beta. It works with the latest version of Blender, so I'm not sure how far back you can go. I'm currently working on the uh, 4.23 LTS version, and it works very well. As you can see, if you want to use it, combined with Flair 2, and you can add chromatic aberration to the lights, something you can't do with Flair 2 alone, which is something I'd like to achieve eventually. Uh, but I still need to figure out how to best approach these two add-ons, which, uh, as you can see, works very well together. Uh, thank you, and I wish you a Merry Christmas. If it hasn't passed already, because I'm not sure if this video will be released in time, um, we will see each other in 2025. Bye!